How's it going everyone, Michael here. So today we're gonna go over the algorithm problem, group shifted strings. This is a very, very popular Facebook problem and you kind of have to think outside of the box to solve it. It's definitely not your typical problem, at least not from my experience, but I'm gonna walk through it step by step. For this problem, we are given a list of strings like this, and we have to group these strings together based on their shifting sequence. So, you know, what is a shifting sequence? So let's look at these two strings, A, B, D, and B, C, E. So to get from character A to character B, that only takes one step since B is right after A. And then to get from B to D, that takes two steps. So essentially our shifting sequence for the string ABD is one, two. Now for string BCE, to get from B to C, that takes one step. And to get from C to E, that takes two steps. So once again, our shifting sequence is one, two for this string. Both of these strings have the same exact shifting sequence because one, they are the same size in length, and two, their patterns are the same. Both strings had the same shifting sequence of one and then a two. After we determine the shifting sequence for every string in our list, our output should be the following. ABD tied with BCE, AC tied with YA, and H tied with P. So let's jump into the algorithm. In order to group these strings efficiently by their shifting sequence, we are going to need a hash map. The key in our hash map is going to be the shifting sequence, and the value is going to be a list of strings that match that shifting sequence. So we're gonna need to loop over all of the strings in our array. So starting at index zero, we have the string ABD. Now to get from A to B, that takes one step, and then to get from B to D, that takes two steps. So our sequence is one, two. One thing to keep in mind is for each shift that we do, we need a delimiter between them. So we can just use a comma, for example. You could use any character as long as it's not a digit. The reason this delimiter is needed is because we need to be able to differentiate a shifting sequence from another. As an example, let's say I represented this one comma two shifting sequence without the comma. So let's just say I represent it as one, two, but this would not be able to tell the difference between a shifting sequence of 12, like the number 12. One, two, and 12, those are obviously different shifting sequences. So that's why you need a delimiter. So moving on, we have a sequence of one comma two, and we're gonna check if that string is inside of our hash map. And since it's not, we're gonna create a new entry with a list containing the string ABD. Next, we're gonna look at string BCE. From B to C, that's one step. From C to E, that's two steps. So our shifting sequence is one comma two, and we do have that shifting sequence in our map. So we're just gonna add BCE to our list. Next, we have the string AC. To get from A to C, it takes two steps. So our shifting sequence is just two, and we're gonna create a new list for that shifting sequence and add the string AC. Next, we have the string YA. And so for this string, it's a little bit interesting because to get from Y to A, we have to essentially circle back around. Still, this would only take two steps, one to go from Y to Z and one to go from Z to A. And so our shifting sequence is two and we're going to add YA to that list. Next, we're at the string H and this shifting sequence is just an empty string. There's no sequence since it's a character on its own. So we're gonna create a new list with the string H. And then finally, we have another string of size one. The shifting sequence is empty string. So we're gonna add P to that list. So by the end of iterating over all of the strings in our list, we will be left with this final output. All right, let's go over the code for this solution. We are given an array of strings, and then we need to return a list of list of strings from our function, essentially grouping all of the strings by their shifting sequence. The first thing we wanna do is initialize our hash map. Next, we need to loop over our list of strings. So we're gonna say for string str in strings, and Essentially what we need to do for every string is compute that shifting sequence. So what we can do here, let's initialize a string builder and we can call it pattern. 
And now we need to start computing the difference, essentially how far away each character is away from its neighbor. So in order to do that, we need to start a loop starting at index one. So we're gonna say for int i equal to one, and then i is less than string dot length, i plus plus. And so what we're gonna do is compare the character at i and i minus one. So what we can do is say char prev is equal to string dot char at i minus one. And then cur, our current character, is string dot char at i. And now we need to compute the difference between these characters. So in my opinion, I think having a separate function for this makes sense. So we'll say int and we'll call it maybe distance. And we're going to say compute distance. And we're going to pass in the previous character and the current character. So for now, let's just assume we have this function written just so we can continue on in the logic. So what we want to do now is we're going to say pattern dot append. We're going to append this distance to our pattern. And then we're also going to append a comma. And so like I mentioned, you can use whatever delimiter you want. You could use a comma, maybe you want a pipe. It doesn't matter as long as it's not a digit. Next, what we need to do is when we come out of this for loop, we need to create a new list if the shifting sequence does not exist. And then we just need to say list dot add the string. And then we need to update our map. So we're going to say map dot put, and we're going to put the pattern with the list inside of it. And then when we come out of this for loop, we're returning a list of lists of strings. We really only need the values inside of our hash map. We don't need to know the actual shifting sequence values. We only ju we just need to group them together. So what we can do here is we could just say return new array list and we're going to say map.values. And so the last thing we need to do is create this compute distance function. So remember, we have characters, but we want to know the distance between them. So in order to do that, we could say int val is equal to prev minus the character a plus one. And then val two is equal to cur minus character a plus one. So why did we do this? The reason we do minus character a is because any character that's a, that's a letter minus the character a will give us the actual integer value. So for example, if we had character a minus character a, that would be the value zero. And then we don't want it to be index based. So that's why I offset it by one. So if we had the character a minus the character a, this would equal zero, but then we're offsetting it. So now this is one. All of the possible values that we can have in this compute distance function are just one to 26. So now that we understand that, we can come down here, we're gonna say return, if val is less than val two, this is the simplest case. All we have to do is val two minus val. But there's still an extra edge case. Remember, we went over an example previously. Say we were comparing character y with character a. We have to essentially wrap around. So in order to do that, we need to compute the distance from y to z, but then compute the distance from a to wherever value two is. So in order to do that, we know there's 26 characters in the alphabet. So all we have to do is say 26 minus val plus val two. And so that is it for this algorithm. Let's submit just to make sure it works. 
our time complexity is going to be big O of m times n, where m is the number of strings we have, and n is the max string length. Because for every string, we need to iterate over all of its characters in order to determine its shifting sequence. Line four is the big O of m portion. Line six is the big O of n portion. And since the loop is nested, we multiply these notations together. Our space complexity is going to be big O of n, where n is the number of entries we have in our map. I have some other string problems on this channel if you want to learn more problems like this. Also, check out my public Discord channel. It's still fairly new and the group has grown a lot. So if you're looking to maybe get some study partners or just, you know, talk about computer science related topics, this is a great place to do it. So that's all I have for you guys and I will see you all next time.